The new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC model has just launched in Mercedes-Benz showrooms and I've managed to grab a first glimpse. Let's take a look. So now guys, the GLC in the Mercedes-Benz range actually first launched all the way back in 2016. And basically it launched in an SUV variant just like this here and was certainly a very, very popular model in Mercedes. And I think I know why, mainly because the GLA is of course slightly smaller, but it's not as big as a GLE or GLS as those are quite large cars. So this kind of sits perfectly in the middle, you know, in case you need a slightly larger car with a bit more practicality, which we'll touch on in just a second. But yes, it's basically based on the C-Class and just raised slightly. So certainly with this new exterior design, which we'll touch on in a minute, but I wanted to touch on the boot first because it is larger than before. Now I mentioned about practicality. So of course, if you're after a GLC SUV, you're probably after a larger boot. And Mercedes-Benz has done it. It's actually 50 liters larger than before. Obviously it does kind of depend if you go for a plug-in hybrid or uh, like a diesel or petrol engine as the boot size will vary slightly but it could be anything from like 400 litres up to 620 litres in total with the seats up like this and um, of course they've got this kind of nice reversible mat there's uh, loads of space under here just like before so um, usual things like a shopping crate there tyre repair kit first aid kit and uh high-vis jacket there just in case so uh, pretty good and just like the previous model as well there's these little switches here which will send these seats down just in case you need to get something in as quickly as possible but one thing i will note is that uh, when you do it now the front seat there will actually go forward slightly just because in case it's you know too far back otherwise it will catch so uh, the previous model didn't do that so yeah nice improvement on that one Dimensions wise, I don't know how they've done it, but the new model is actually two centimeters smaller side to side on its width. I guess just to make parking a little easier, but it does increase in length. But don't worry, for reference, it's only about the size of a small paperclip in extra length. Now guys, when it comes to the exterior, Mercedes-Benz have started to bring out these new grills with all these kind of little Mercedes-Benz stars on them. And I remember I counted the one on the C-Class and there are around about 250 of them. Now I won't do that here just because it looks like there's more. So if you, one of you want to count them, let me know in the comment section down below. But um, yeah, very, very nice. And um, of course, up here on the bonnet, got these big long power domes that go up here, just kind of aiding that sporty look, which brings me very neatly onto the lights. Now these lights are new in Mercedes-Benz. Uh, of course, they have this new digital light technology. Uh, I'd love to try that out. So hopefully over the next few weeks or so, I'll be able to try out digital light on the road, just waiting for the right timing because uh, it does take a while to film. But these new lights have kind of got these two split elements here. You've got this single LED strip at the top and then these couple of sections just underneath and some very, very nice blue hints just on the side there, which I quite like. So uh, certainly matches the blue of this car. Right, so that's the front. Let's have a look at the rear seats. So yes, guys, the rear seats. Now, um, yeah, this is actually quite spacious. Um, basically on the previous GLC, uh, me being quite tall, I can actually fit five of me in here quite comfortably for especially like a long journey. I guess this is obviously assisted even more with the kind of seat design. It kind of curves in that way for your, for your knees to go here. I, I naturally have long legs anyway, and that's set up for my driving position. But um, yeah, in this car, uh, it's got quad zone climate control. Obviously, when it comes to specification, guys, just double check with local Mercedes as they can let you know exactly what's available, uh, where you live and that sort of thing. So it will vary slightly. Uh, but speaking of which, this one has a uh, very, very nice panoramic roof. Um, in fact, actually, someone's put the blind halfway. Uh, so hang on, let's press that button there. Ah, look at that. In fact, that looks... Ah, I know why. Actually, on the previous model, uh, the blind on the front rolled up in there and then that one rolled up in here as well. So this was quite um, quite a big black bar before, so that's actually smaller than before. It's just one continuous blind. And yeah, that is definitely a definition of a panoramic roof. That is huge. Obviously, it's just the front one that opens, but um, 
yeah, that is a huge improvement on that one. Of course, um, usual things should have cup holders in here like before. So press this and press it lightly again and it should open. There we go. And um, yeah, of course, then you should be able to do a 40-20-40 split on the seats. So you should be able to do the middle one. Yeah, there we go. Just in case you need to put like some long items in. But yeah, that's the back. Let's have a look at the front. Now, Mercedes-Benz design has started recently to go this way. Now, this is this kind of portrait style screen in the middle here. And the reason why it's designed like this, and it's not something you might think immediately, but the reason why it's designed like this is if you've ever tried to use a touchscreen while the car is in motion, it's very, very tricky. You know, try typing something on the keyboard and, you know, you're there like that and it's going all over the place. Your elbow here acts as a contact point. So it actually stabilizes it. So it's a lot easier to use uh, the touchscreen. So you have your arm here and then you can easily reach things. Now the most uh, common things like climate control are always present at the bottom. So this section actually doesn't change at all. It's mainly the top part that changes. So just to show you what you can do on this, if I tap the home button, this will show you exactly what you can do on this multimedia system. So things like usual things like radio, media, of course, phone functions and various settings and things. But um, the way this actually works, this new design of screen is called zero layer. Now, um, I have covered this in uh, one of my uh, tutorials on some of the things I like about this multimedia system, some of the top features. And um, basically, zero layer kind of incorporates as many things onto the home screen as possible, but intelligently showing you what's important at that relevant time. So, for example, I've literally just jumped in this car now and it's prompting, would you like to connect a phone? So that's kind of the first thing you probably might do. And of course, then you've got your various functions at the top here with the sat nav to use it. So it's all present on the screen. And as you use the car, it will actually suggest certain things. So say you turn the radio on every day at a certain time, it will suggest that for you. And uh, say you've called someone at a certain time, it will suggest that as well. And of course, if you don't want to use that inbuilt multimedia system, this system has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Of course, it does depend on your phone. So I won't run through the entire multimedia system in this video, it's just a quick kind of overview, but yeah, it is very, very good and very intuitive to use. So moving on to some other elements uh, in here, we have uh, cup holders, of course, and uh, you can in certain specifications get wireless charging in here. So there's a USB-C port there, then in here there'll be uh, two USB-C ports in there for charging. And uh, I just want to check something actually, because under here, yes, under here, not many people know this, there is a 12 volt socket kind of almost where the right knee of the passenger is just down there. And I think the main reason for that is because um, sometimes you might want to get a dash cam and uh, normally a 12 volt socket is somewhere in this area in the car. So what Mercedes-Benz have done is put the 12 volt socket just under there, which now means you won't have any wires dangling here and keep it nice and well, just kind of neat and tidy. So then the wire can go kind of go up there and up around near the top. That's if you want to use it as a dash cam. You could just put like a, I don't know, a 12 volt to USB in there and charge someone else's phone or charge something else or mainly for anything with just a 12 volt accessory. So moving on to the steering wheel, this is the new Mercedes-Benz design of the steering wheel. So you've got these kind of twin elements, twin spokes on the steering wheel there, all touch sensitive. So you can literally tap on here and swipe it left and right to control different things. Certain specifications as well can also have a head up display I won't run through that here, but if you want to check out uh, what a head-up display does, click on the pop-up banner up above. Now, one really cool thing with this car is a thing called transparent bonnet. Now, transparent bonnet basically lets you almost see through the car down to the floor. So if you're going to do any off-roading or not necessarily going over rocks and things, but if you're just going off the kind of beaten track, you can actually have the 360 camera memorize what it saw and then kind of overlay it. So I guess, as I said, it's probably just utilizing the 360 camera, stitching it together and just showing you what's underneath. So particularly useful if there's like larger rocks and things you want to avoid. So uh, yeah. Nice improvements to that camera as well. Now, up next, guys, are the engines. Now, there's actually some really, really cool things on these engines. So, number one, they're all mild hybrid technology, uh, unless it's a plug-in hybrid, of course. So, basically, mild hybrid technology helps assist the engine, either turning it off more often, just to help uh, save emissions and reduce fuel consumption. And it can also act as a boost. It can make it go a bit quicker as well, which is uh, pretty good. 
So when it comes to the engines, there are three diesel engines and two petrol engines. There's also the plug-in hybrids in that mix as well. So there's a 220D, a 300D, of course, with uh, varying horsepowers. Then same one on diesel, you can now get a diesel plug-in hybrid as well. So this is a 300DE, so diesel electric. Uh, when it comes to the petrols, then there's a uh, 300 and a 300E. Now the range of these plug-in hybrids goes up to 80 miles, not 18, 80, 80. So that is incredible. That's pretty much like what um, the first generation electric smart car could do in terms of its range. So that is insane. Uh, currently the best one in Mercedes at the moment is the GLE, which was about 60, 66. And the C-Class kind of did around that as well. But yeah, this has uh, about 30, 30 ish kilowatt hour battery. So that is how that range is achieved. So that is really, really good. Now, of course, when it comes to charging in the UK, most of our homes will only charge at about seven kilowatts on the wall box that looks a bit like this here. So of course, just factor that in, it should probably charge around about five hours or so on a, um, on a home wall box. But of course, um, as it can charge up to about 11 kilowatts in public, uh, if you find a type 2 connector it will charge just that little bit quicker so yeah amazing engines mild hybrids all round unless it's a plug-in hybrid and of course you can choose petrol or diesel on a plug-in hybrid now as well so guys with all of those huge improvements with engine technology to plug-in hybrids with increased range new looks on the inside larger boot capacity new multimedia systems what do you all think let me know in the comment section down below Personally, I actually really, really like that. And I, I would love to get an electric car myself somewhere, but they are just quite out of my price range personally. But having said that, a plug-in hybrid that can do 80 miles, that sounds incredible. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Now, just in case you're considering a slightly different car, like a GLB, I did cover this one recently. So click this video here if you want to see that car and its review going through all the inside and its multimedia system and that sort of thing. Huge shout out to Sandam Mercedes as always, as they help provide access to all these awesome cars you see in the videos. See you next time, guys.